So I got the 4450 back here in the shed. We got on and off shower, so I want it to be dry for what I'm about to do. Now I put that camera system on the combine. And in this box, I got two more cameras for that. But this video is not about that. Today, I'm going to be putting this Halo View 7 inch wired monitor. So this one is not wireless. It's wired and I'm going to put it on the back of this 4450 somewhere up there in that general area and um, so in the spring and fall when we're doing heavy field work and sometimes hauling hay we have the retired neighbor help us out and if he's doing a full day he says his neck starts to hurt you know looking behind you all the time these are the older tractors it doesn't have the swivel seat so halo view said they were going to send out a wired version and uh to review for free so i figured it'd be the best thing to put on there and help the old neighbor out helping us so we're gonna start hooking this up we'll do a little unboxing for you I don't even need my knife. Well, you always got to figure these things out. Each one's a little different. Let's see. Okay. Take this plastic cover off here. Throw that out of the way for now. Here. Right here. these deals there we go first we got user manual which tells you a bunch of stuff about it I guess I'll give you the specifications like I said it's a so, seven inch seven screen. screen you can hook up the three cameras it does have a speaker and the camera does have a microphone I usually just shut those off because all you hear is the tractor but let's say you're putting it on your car and you want to hear people behind you and uh, I guess it has a quick switch. You can switch between cameras in 0.8 seconds. So not too bad. We'll get in here and there it is. Kind of like the uh, camera for the combine. It's almost the same packaging. There, got the sunshade on it up here. The uh, mounting, we'll pull out the monitor. Just like the one I put in the combine, it's just it doesn't have the spots for the antennas. Otherwise, all the buttons look the same. And um, there's the SD card spot if you wanted to record stuff, you could put that in there. It also comes with this sticky pad here, so if you wanted to stick it on a window, you just take this part, slide it up, tighten the nut, and there you go. That's not the way I'm going to mount mine. Take that out, take that out. Here's the wiring for it. Got to figure all that out yet. So. What it looks like is each one of these goes to a different camera, but see there's camera two, camera one, this is the one I'll be using since I only have one camera, and then you got the power. You also have these other wires if you wanted to wire it into your blinker, it'll automatically change the view for you, but uh, we're just going to have this run all the time. Looks like this is a fuse here, that's what I think, yep, fuse. Here we got hardware to mount your camera and the um, other bracket. Here's your sunshade for your screen so sun from the side doesn't 
shade it out. Take that and off. And lastly, you got this bracket here, which I'm going to use. And um, you'll take you'll take these screws here. You run it through there, and then you thread right on to the side. Just like that, and then you can adjust where you mount it. Mine, I think, will be kind of like that. So I'm up here in the cab of the 4450, and you can see there's this bracket here. The owner, or two owners before us, they had a CB radio right there. And I'm thinking, I unscrew that mount, and I put their camera mount right here and then I have the screen mount right here I think that'll work perfect this bracket and that CB radio mount are almost the exact same size the camera mount is just a little longer and I think the screws that are on here I'll just use again because they think they'll line up perfectly with this one it's raining now good thing I put it in the shed but I have the screen completely installed and tight so where that CB radio mount was I just took uh, their hardware one on each side you can see right there and there and uh, tighten that down then I took these and uh, tighten those to the right adjustment so when you're sitting here this is what it looked like. I think it's in a pretty good spot. Job is to mount that camera up on the roof, about in the middle, and that's the part I'm not really looking forward to. But uh, yeah, it is raining pretty good out there now. A whole bunch of cord wire, so I can go from. Let's see. I already have this extra stuff zip tied up. I can go from the regular harness for camera one into here and then into the camera which I set on top of the cab. <clears throat> I'll show you my plans on mounting this. Actually it's not going to be as bad as I thought. So we'll climb up this ladder. So here's the back of the cab, I'm going to grab a tape measure and find the center. Now this little lip here, I'm going to screw, uh, drill two holes in here and then get the original mounting hardware and screw it down. Then I'm going to run this wire up here along the edge and then through here and then through this hole in the cab. Now I'm going to try to leave a little gap because mainly what these grooves for are for this water to run out on top so I still need to keep room for that water to run out so we're up here in the cab of the 4450 I took this foam cowling over this area I was gonna work on the camera like I said but I misplaced the screws and if you're anything like me you misplace it so you know what you do you just go do something else and then you'll find them within a minute so Hoping that's what will happen. Anyway, I got the screen wired up. I wish I would have thought of doing this when I did the light bars. What I did with the light bars, that power plug for your monitors, I just tapped into that. Which is okay, but I think I could have did a cleaner job doing what I did with this. So, what I did is I ran the positive. I took my redneck test light here. Yes, that is my test light. It is the back light on a skid loader. And I found the first one. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but this is the one I picked. I don't know exactly what this wire is for. But anyway, I picked the first one that is key hot so when I turn the key on then it battery flows and then I took the ground and I ground it right here underneath this bolt 
So when I turn the battery on, the camera turns right on. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna have to run that antenna wire from that camera, put the extra in the roof, and then somehow run it down this post and then down and under and then into the camera one plug underneath the dash. So that's gonna be a little difficult to make it look good, but I'll try my best to do that. But it turns right on like I want. So I'll have to probably put this stuff down in there out of the way and so I got the camera mounted. I drilled two holes into this piece, and then you can get up on the other side. And I used the original hardware. Just right through the holes on that bracket. And I connected that wire to the long strand of wire they gave me. And there's this piece of rubber that you just slide right over the connection to really ensure no water will get in there. Okay. Next, ran it along here, and then underneath, like I said. Now this is not all done yet. I had to get everything set up because I need to know how much extra wire I'm gonna store up here. Yes, I got it all tangled up. You know, that always happens to me. No one will see it up here anyway. I'll make it look a little better. Zip tie it, and then zip tie it to something secure, maybe like, this piece right here which well that wire runs around to the other end of the camera okay now I'm on the other side takes a while to climb up on these things but ran the wire and I got to here and I wanted to run it down that post but they have this all sealed up with some sort of something and I really don't want to rip that up and I'm really sure I'd have to rip that foam off the corner post and I don't have the glue to put it back on. I really don't think there's any more room in that hole anyway. So what I'm going to do is, here's the light bar. Now this is the wire that goes down to the switch. We ran it in this little crevice down through there. So that's what we're going to do with this wire too. Run that down this down through here i'll push okay. it in with there's a screwdriver now i'm on the ground i'm gonna run this wire through here and what it's gonna do is i think i'm gonna have this wire go in through this little door right up here i'm gonna put it on the back side of this foam run it underneath here with all the other wires back up the side into there so you won't even see this wire in there you only see this monitor wire in there and that's just gonna run back here and then down and around just like the other one there's the screen now I turn the battery on and there's the skid loader right behind us turn the battery off like that now you can adjust the brightness if it's um, according to how bright or you know if it's dark you want to dim it and you can also just shut the screen off if you want to you also got menus where you can change all that stuff auto dim stuff like that but uh, um, you can adjust contrast and stuff like that so then you hit the select button change between cameras I'm only, I'm only gonna have one that's my plan just to have one and I think that camera is a put in the right spot but when I'm done with this whole thing I'm gonna back up to I think the rake down there and I'm gonna see if it looks right otherwise I might have to adjust out here driving with the 4450 
I never touched the brightness except that one little time on video. But uh, you can see right behind you. If you look closely on the bottom, I don't know if you can tell. You can see just the end of the rail tongue. I don't want to point it too far down because most of your implements are going to be way farther behind you. So I'm actually going to back up to the chisel plow close and see how that looks. I still got to pull this little screen off, protect the film. This will give me a real idea if I need to angle it up, down, or leave it the same. There's a chisel plow. Not even gonna look at the camera, just back up to approximately where the draw bar will be hooked up. Yeah, you can see the whole thing. Um, I should probably angle it down a little bit. Uh, volume, I don't need any of that. I need to angle that camera down a little bit. And uh, we good to go. I'll probably back up to something else, check it again, and that's it. But anyway, check out Halo View in the description below. They sent me out this camera system to review. Depends what you're putting it in. It's not really the camera system's fault. Just to make everything look good takes a lot of work. From start to finish of this project was just oh, just about four hours. Started. Oh, it's been a little over four hours. It's 7.22 and I started at uh, 3.50, so. It helps if you uh, don't misplace your tools. I probably would have saved another half hour there. But, uh, looks pretty good. That piece up there is a little flimsy that I screwed onto, so hopefully it's not too flimsy or at the attach it to a different spot. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. Just have to angle her down. And uh, this video is probably long enough, so. You saw exactly what I did. I just put all the cowling and you know all the wires are pretty well hidden and um, hopefully uh, it works out good.